evening and welcome to Nightcaller's Bigfoot Radio. It is May 1st, 2017 and you're here with Lori Phillips, Ricky Smith, and me, Lauren Smith. Yeah. Oh, Lori Hood. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> this is Mrs. Mark Hood. <laughs> Man. I'll get it one day. Anyways. So, you're here with us, and tonight we are going to hear from the um, North Carolina Squatch Watchers. They're um, some of our favorite researchers. They are a very lively, dedicated team that pretty much always have something new to share, which is amazing. Um, if any of the other researchers in the community, that's pretty awesome. Um, anybody have anything interesting to share Squatch-related? I would just like to say something about our guests that are okay. coming up. Uh, uh, I think the thing that, that night callers love about this, this guest that's coming up is that they are so funny. They have a wonderful, wonderful attitude about um, what they do. And not only uh, that, but they they uh, they really do get out there and research. So they are a real research team. And um, but uh, I I think we've had them on three times, and I yeah. we may have had them on three times. And that is not for lack of being able to find other people. That is not why. It's just that I'll run across their name. It brings a smile to my face and said, I want them back on again. So mm-hmm. here they come. Um, but we'll bring them on in just a minute. But what I wanted to say is uh, um, I'm going to hang back this show. I'm still kind of cruddy. But I, what I wanted to say is our hearts and prayers go out to the people of Canton that had the, the terrible... Um, Hurricane, uh, not hurricane, tornado. <laughs> uh, they probably thought they were in a hurricane. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, uh, yes, there there were quite a, quite a few people killed. I, I think it was five out of the Canton area and fourteen in all over yeah. the entire Midwest. This system as it came through, and um, the video footage is is just unreal we we watch i watched a, a video footage of a um one of those uh, tornado chasers and this tornado looked like it just kept switching directions the guy almost got got it he you know he, he thought it would he was out of the way of it and it just kept changing directions so it was a mess and it was kind of made your heart beat just to watch it but anyway, um, just just want to say that we're 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 glad that a lot of our a lot of I have quite a few friends live up in that area: Luke Gross, uh, um, Linda Williams, and some others that live up in that area where all of this happened. They're fine, and um, I know there's some other listeners out there, and I'm thinking of you. I just can't think of your names right at the moment, but I know that y'all were in the area. And um, I'm glad to hear that y'all are okay, too. So uh, it's that time of year, you know, that time of year. So uh, anyway, I'm um, Lauren. You got anything mm-hmm. new to share other than that? Um, no, not really. We are, you know, um, same here. It's storm season. That's how that goes. Um, and, you know, it's what really sucks about all this is that, you know, usually tornado season, it's past few years, it's just whenever it can be, you know, September to July, it seems like is tornado season. But, um, what really stinks about the, you know, what happens and a cold front right in front of it, which there usually is, but the, you know that these people are displaced from their homes and it's really cold, and um, so that just stinks. And it's kind of something to, you know, if you're going to donate to Red Cross or FEMA or whatever to their causes, you know, just kind of keep in mind that um, it's kind of chilly here lately, and so they might could use some winter stuff. And, um, Coat, blankets. Yeah. And things like that. I know they're providing water. They have 
uh, provided emergency shelters and stuff like that. But this tornado was on the ground for over an hour, 51 miles, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just unbelievable. And um, that's very. But rare. anyway, uh, yeah, <sighs> could have been worse. So yep. anyway, uh, just keep them people in your prayers, folks. That they get well. That they're that everything they have worked for is restored. And you know, uh, we know this that Bible speaks to this that you know, for every bad thing, God finds good from it. And that's the truth. So, uh, Lauren, if you're ready, I'm going to let you go ahead and have it. I'm going to sit back and cough and hack, and, and um, I'm going to be on mute so that I'm not offending anybody out there or grossing them out. So, anyway, I'm, I'm gone. <laughs> I'll be listening in. All right. All right. Um, okay. Return of the a CNC and I think night colors North Carolina Squatch Watchers. In continuing the series of the American Sasquatch Researcher, Night Colors Bigfoot Radio brings you back again with a special team called the North Carolina Squatch Watchers. They are on a number one rated local cable local cable TV show WHKY 14 Friday nights at eight. Rex Allen Theater presents. The Squatch Watchers are a Sasquatch research team from the western part of North Carolina. The team members consist of team research leader David Martin and research members Taylor Cook, Toby, Toby Bullock, Derek Stevenson, and the newest member, Awesome Angie, who started as a skeptic and has been an active hunter for around four months, and she just she's hooked just like the boys. Over the past four years, every week, they have searched for evidence of Bigfoot and have obtained evidence through hours of video footage. Their evidence consists of knocks, yells, growls, objects being thrown, and rock bashing near the riverbanks. Um, in their opinion, they hunt the hottest Bigfoot spot in America based off of their continued Sasquatch experiences. They actually started out as five skeptics, but now there are five Sasquatch believers. So this team can be reached at ncsquatchwatchers at gmail.com or can be found on their Facebook page, um, which you can look for, NC Squatch Watchers. So join us for an exciting show tonight as we discuss Bigfoot with all five, well, I think it's all three team members at the moment, <coughs> of the North Carolina Squatch Watchers and see what's been happening with the gang since we last talked to them. And I'm going to bring them off mute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How are you hey, all right. Tonight? We on the air? Yes, yeah. you're on the air. <laughs> Go ahead, Taylor. I'll let you. I'll let you take the lead. Let me take the lead. Yeah, go ahead. I was hoping you would take the lead tonight. All right, well, 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 let, 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 let me go ahead and throw this out there first. First off, I appreciate uh, you guys having us back on yet again. Uh, thank you for the kind words, and more importantly, thank you for the. Uh, requested prayers for all the folks that have been uh, victims of the tornadoes and hurricanes as of late. And I'd like to do the same shout out here in North Carolina for all the flood victims. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the death toll is up to three as of today, and they're still, you know, in search and rescue in certain uh, parts of the state and county. I'm going to cut my lights off so I don't hear the, the uh, buzzer there. But... Uh, I'm, I, I was driving down the road. I had to park so we could do this. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I appreciate you know, that. lots, of, lots of bad weather going on. Lots of folks are affected. A lot of folks are displaced from their homes. And uh, I appreciate the fact that you guys offered prayer up first. And uh, on a personal note, uh, the reason we're driving tonight, and Taylor called to remind us about this show, and thank you, Taylor, for doing so. I, my mind would be so stressed I almost forgot. But we just got back from the hospital visiting with my aunt. And uh, everybody that's listening might say a special prayer for Shirley Leonard. Um, if something doesn't change uh, immediately, uh, she is going to be going home to, to meet her maker. And uh, we're praying that that doesn't happen. But uh, she is such okay. a special person to me. I love her so much. And, and uh, oh, of course, we will. We will. Yeah. Of course. So just, uh, she is in uh, Lake Norman Regional uh, Medical Center here in Mooresville, North Carolina, right now. 
And, and uh, her name is Shirley. Shirley Leonard. And um, okay. So we're we're hoping that the Lord will, will touch her in a special way to to bring her around this curve. And I, you know, I know that nothing is beyond His reach or His control. Nothing and uh, we'll right. we'll accept His will no matter what. But uh, we'll love Him and her both. But just uh, she really needs to be uplifted in prayer, everybody. Well, do it right now. Do it. <laughs> Prayers your way. So, uh, so but on to more uh, exciting things. We hope. Uh, yes. um, where would you guys like for us to start with uh, things well, that have been happening in the world I, of uh, NC Squatch Watchers? Pretty <laughs> much. So I've been watching your live Facebook videos. I love those. Please don't ever stop them because I'll have to come hunt <laughs> y'all down. Um, they're like the highlight of my day because y'all do them. Quite often, and don't stop that either. That's awesome. So, I watch your live videos, and I really enjoy them. You guys are so passionate about this. Um, I was telling them before we came on air, everybody, that one of my favorite things about this group is that they always have something new to share because it's like their goal in life is to never let their research get stagnant. They are always on the move. They're always out in the field. They're always making it happen. Excuses just are they just don't exist for these guys. So, um I would like to hear what happened since we talked to you last. I think we can go ahead and skip your history because we've done that the last three shows. So if you Correct. guys want to hear Squatch Watchers history, please go back and listen to the shows we've had with them before. You can look them up on YouTube or our Nightcaller's archives. Um so I want to start fresh. What have you guys had happen that's you know gonna blow our okay. minds? This- well, and and I, I apologize. I, I guess maybe we should have shared a picture with y'all. And if oh, if we oh, haven't, oh, oh. if we haven't, and what, what we'll do, Lori, is we will do this for the next show, so you guys can have plenty of time for people to view it. Um, and because you know, we we have so much. We let, let, let me let me let me try to explain this. Our group has a great deal of respect in the Bigfoot community simply because we don't offer up hokey things, okay? If we think you're presenting us with a bunch of bunk, we do not even show that on our website, on Facebook, nowhere. Who wants to see questionable evidence, okay? If if I'm questioning it, why do I want to let somebody else look at it? So... Having said that, we had a group of people that first reached out to our producer, Rex Lale, and said that they had a photograph that they wanted us to look at. And the the, the history of the photograph is that this was in uh, a, during the month of June of 2015. And uh, they they put up a trail cam. Went back in October, took the trail cam down, pulled the SD card out, loaded everything up on a computer, blanked the SD card, loaded it back up, put the trail cam back up on another hunt site, and didn't even think about looking at any pictures on this trail cam until 2016, okay? So needless to say, they weren't real concerned about the deer activity because evidently there was enough there. They're like, yeah, we're going to hunt there anyway. Mm-hmm. So when when they went back in 2016 to look at the the uh, evidence or the the photographs, there was one frame on there that just just blew everybody's gourd. Well, this group did, they did the cardinal sin for me. They they printed it out. They printed a, a full color picture of it. And then they deleted all of their stuff and went on about their business, Man. thinking thinking that somehow what they had wasn't a Sasquatch. Well, fast forward till about when was it? Uh, December, Probably. November, December yeah. this past year, uh, Taylor. Yeah, we went really to their cold. property. <laughs> oh yeah, we went to their property and they presented us with the with the picture and. I say this with this this is everything that makes NC Squatch Watchers who we are. I think it's one of the best Sasquatch pictures I've ever seen in my entire life. 
and I comb through the Internet. I look at all the hoax stuff. I look at all the questionable stuff. I look at all the stuff and like, wow, I wish I could go there and look at that. Well, this one came to us. Now, the neat thing about this is I, I, don't, I can't give you the exact date because there's people that may be listening that can put two and two together. Um, mm-hmm. And I can I can tell you when we aired this on our show, we actually had people calling in to WHKYTV14 trying to get them not to air our show. They yeah. didn't want they didn't want the picture seen. They did not want it publicized where we were hunting. They they wanted us off the air, and I did not understand why until about a month later. So. When people ask us now where we hunt, we hunt the, the greater western North Carolina is our primary hunt area, and that's a lot of area. Uh, and the reason being is we're becoming such a fixture in the community that people, I don't want to give people enough uh, room to hoax us uh, yeah. because that's very dangerous for everyone. Mm-hmm. And um, to know what was going on the night this picture was taken, Taylor, myself, and Toby uh, were with two guests, and I can't mention their names because I don't have permission to do so, took us to one of their hunt sites that in our in our own backyard, but in a part of the mountain that we had never been before. The night yeah. we were there hunting, Taylor stayed with the two with the two members that invited us, and they actually had a mini flare set up, and they were recording flare footage. Toby and I went off into the mountain, into a ravine where we had heard movement and sounds, and we we followed this ravine, and we could clearly hear this creature moving, and when it climbed the hill up in front of us, we just completely lost it, okay? Now, what we didn't realize, Toby and I are down below, we, we don't know, we're oblivious to what Taylor and them are doing. Taylor and them are filming the same creature, picking its head up over the very ridge that we just chased it up. Yeah. So now we've, we've got clear video footage of this creature, and then the same weekend that we're doing this hunt, a mile and a half away is where the picture was taken in the exact same hunt area. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, so. have, a, we have a picture of a bipedal primate that I'm going to guesstimate is at least seven and a half feet tall, 450 pounds, that clearly shows both feet, both legs, the buttocks, the the hind haunches, the muscles in the shoulder. It shows the left arm, the elbow, the muscles in the in the the, the shoulder. It shows the forearm and a clenched hand. Now, the head is really blurry, and so is the right shoulder because it, the photograph took right as it was walking through the frame, and that's where the, you know, this was a 15-year-old trail cam, not a very high-tech one like we would have today. But still, you can see the pads of the feet. You can see the outlines of the legs and the butt. You can, once you clean the picture up, you can see the shape of the head and the shoulders are clearly defined. Yeah, and I can tell you it was taken at three three thirty a.m. in the in the morning, and I'm telling you, most people who are going to try to hoax, a is not going to be out there this time of night to hoax in a remote area where you're going to have to walk in probably fifteen miles to do it, and then find the one trail cam that nobody knows is there to punk them. Okay, and just in that much detail, you know that's. That's just like the patty. Everyone said, oh, it's a suit. Man, that's a whole lot of detail for a suit. Oh, yeah. If if you yeah. ever thought, the, if you ever the Patterson Gimbal film looked real, this photograph, other than the blurry shoulder, or uh, if, if it weren't for the blurry shoulder, we would have the best known, in my opinion, actual photograph of a Sasquatch ever taken. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so beyond that, I mean, yeah. so beyond that, I mean, it, it, it was incredible. And the, and the people that brought it to us, 
brought it to us because they knew we would present it in a fashion that would not make people look foolish and right. have confidence that, you know, A, we, you know, I wouldn't have brought it out to anyone if we didn't believe it to be real. I have studied, right. have never had a photograph that I have not studied I bet you I studied this thing for probably a month straight and, you know, stripping colors out of here and cleaning this frame up and trying to just, you know, if it's fake, i got to find it. It is real. So was the photo, was the photo taken a, a day or night? I'm sorry if I missed it that. Was, it was at 3.30 a.m. in the morning. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, and it, is, it is a beautiful picture. Yeah, the guy that actually owns the picture, they had to like basically force him to like come to us with it. He didn't even want any like publicity out of it or anything like that. He just right. that's how. Yeah, so this guy, he's, it was amazing. <laughs> they they didn't want the notoriety. They just yeah they they wanted someone to look at it and tell them you know is it is it a Sasquatch or is it just some kind of hoax or it, did they have a very rare picture of a bear on two feet. No. Right. This, this any chance clearly, we can... it, Taylor, tell them how clear the foot looks. Oh, you can, like, the uh, basically you take a pic, go stand out probably 10 foot in front of a, a disposable camera and take a, lift your foot up and take a picture of it. And it's, but, I mean, it's clear. I mean, you can tell that. It's a, you can see the whole, like, heel of the foot with the fur around it. I mean, it's crazy. You can see the pad of the feet. And yeah. you can see a joint in the foot that shouldn't be there on any type of human. Um, so you yeah. said you're going to share that photo with us, or no? Yeah. Well, well I mean, Eventually. what we'll do is, is <laughs> yeah, when we when we when we come back and do another segment, we will present the photo, and uh, we will go from there because we're very, you know, we we've aired it, and we got a lot of good feedback. We got a lot of blowback from it. Um, you know, we did. We 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 were on this January. We were on uh, Finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet, and I really was so. You know, to watch the process of how those types of shows are made are wonderful, but you know, on the tail end of it, the letdown of it's a little bit is a little bit different. Uh, I was expecting more support and uh, less less skepticism. Um, you know, Taylor and I, you know, well, even Angie, and Angie's sitting here, she's right beside of me. We're the biggest skeptics that you've ever seen. Right. But we we concentrate primarily on one part of North Carolina. Now, we do travel, but I would just figure that people who have traveled all over this country and all over the world would by now have found enough evidence that they no longer need to scrutinize it so desperately to try to prove that something is true that we all know within our hearts is real. And, you know, once you have seen a Sasquatch physically with your own eyes, what else do you need? Um, we went, just, just this past Friday, we went on a hunt, and we took two people out with us who had never been before. And uh, Taylor was up on one end of the property and did a – was it you or Toby that did the knock, Taylor? Yeah, I did. He was being Okay, yeah. when you did the knock, what happened after that knock? The that, the loud, like, just – it it was it was down below us, so it had been, like, I guess in the middle of me and you, the loud just – I don't know. It sounded like just a vicious, just I can't even like. I guess a growl. I guess you would say like a growlish kind of yelp. You could say I don't know. It's kind of like a was, yeah. You you can was, do the sound way better than me. <laughs> well, I mean, with without it, it almost sounded like a roar, but it was so deep yeah. and visceral. I mean, you could feel it in your chest, but it was yeah. And it I've was had just that happen. Long long and drawn out and I was trying to speak to this one gentleman who was an avid uh, woodsman to try to get him to understand different sounds that he hears and when 
you know, they knocked. I said, that's my team knocking. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I mean, this thing couldn't have been more than maybe 150, 200 feet off of us, you know. And when it made that growl or roar, he's like, I've never heard anything like that in the woods before. And I said, that's because I believe you're hearing a Sasquatch. And this guy's attitude changed on a dime. I mean, he went from, you know, there's no way this stuff is real, you know, uh, you're going to have to prove it to me, to holy cow, what are we dealing with? And do I need to have a gun? And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, no, no guns. I don't want to get shot. Okay, so uh, you know, these guys. What I mean, they weren't there 15 minutes. And I mean, that, granted, we had already been in the woods, kind of stirring things up, and they were late, uh, of all things. <laughs> By the way, if you are ever privileged enough to be able to go on a hunt with the NC Squatch Watchers, don't be late. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it jacks everything up. So uh, now, uh, you know, in in previous in previous uh, radio broadcasts with you guys, we've always had a chance to talk about uh, our rock pile and a, what we call our gifting site. And the last, I'm gonna say, during the last two months. We have had this rock pile now rearranged at least three, if not four times. It happens so much, I kind of lose count. You know, because it'll go dormant for a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months, and all of a sudden the activity starts back up. And I get so thrilled uh, with that rock pile. And, and what we'll do is, and we'll actually, next time that we're in the woods doing a hunt, we're going to do a live. Facebook with that rock pile so everyone can see what we're doing and yeah. just how neat this site is and how, I mean, it means everything to me because it is a physical form of communication that we have ongoing now for better than two years. I mean, this just didn't happen and once in a while it's over with. This has been ongoing for better than two years now and that, and that site continues to amaze me. That's the same spot where we first ever got the big rock thrown at us, too. <laughs> yes. Um, I have that rock right here in my glove glove box of my Suburban. Uh, I'm holding it in my hand, Taylor. I still have that rock. And, uh, you know, that thing is it's about as big as a baseball is as far as the size and probably weighs about, I don't know, six or seven ounces, maybe, maybe eight ounces. So... You know, when you're slinging when you're slinging something that hard through the woods, you don't want to get hit with it. So no, no. no. <laughs> and and you know, I know it sounds silly, but we if we can find them, if we can find the rocks, we always try to keep them. And some of them we've actually dated and put the date on the bottom of them, and just put them on the mantle in in our cabin and just leave them sitting. Uh, you know, we've got rocks thrown at us that range anywhere from, you know, the biggest one I'd say is probably about six or seven pounds. And when one of those comes rolling through the woods, you know something is moving. Yeah. It sounds like a freight train rolling through there. (laughs) Do you think they throw them in aggression or for distraction, mostly? I think it's distraction. Yes. It most of... I'm going to say 50-50. I don't believe ever one time that we've had them thrown in aggression. I think that it's to get our attention, and in some cases it's to distract us and get our attention elsewhere so something can happen or something can move without being seen. And in our area, now this is merely a theory, and keep in mind not this past March, but March a year ago, we cast a juvenile what we believe is a baby Sasquatch footprint, uh, eight and a half, nine inches, you know, I'm going to say probably 120 pounds, okay? A uh, very small Sasquatch. And we had so much activity during that time, we're not so sure what, we're not in like a uh, corridor where they may be actually like nursing or raising small Sasquatch, and that might be one of the reasons we have so much activity is that a lot of the juveniles are actually interacting with us just as a form of entertainment. 
we don't know, merely a theory. But mm-hmm. it's been, Angie, it's probably been, what, a month ago? We we were down at base camp, and we heard this, I mean, a it, something come crashing through the, 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 the woods down there and had a big bang. And we immediately went towards the sound, and Angie and my daughter, Kaylin, uh, stayed behind uh, at, at the base camp there. And then I'm going to let Angie kind of tell you just to, now you got to talk, Angie. You can't shake your head. <laughs> you got to show them how awesome you, show them how awesome you are. So uh, I'm going to try to get her to describe to you what her theory was is the reason why we went one way and everything else happened elsewhere. So what, what happened after we left? After y'all left, um, where the big noise and everything was, mm-hmm. me and Kevin was there, and we had, we seen like a shadow of four big foot. Oh, I forgot that, about that. That was there and that's through the woods. There is, a, there is a small section of this property that has a ravine in it that has a lot of uh, uh, bamboo, and uh, it's hard to get into. But once you get in there, you realize that you could hide several school buses in this little ravine, and you'd never even know they were there. Uh, and after the – when it separated us, it's like Taylor said, it, it – the sound was a distraction, and it separated the team. Uh, Taylor and Rex, and I don't, I don't remember who else was there. Was Daniel with us that night? Yeah, Daniel was with us that night. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, they went over where the sound was, and, of course, I went completely uh, down towards the cave section of the property where there's caves on the property. And I know full well I saw something that evening, and I know I saw facial features for the first time on a creature that was at least seven foot plus. But I it forgot. was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was gone so quick. I mean, I went in the woods immediately after it, and you know, and I, I, I had great support because while I was deep in the woods, I could hear Taylor and Daniel out there at the edge, and they wasn't coming in. So. <laughs> so, and, and, and in Taylor's I'm sure. I, I'm just sure he wanted he wanted to make sure Daniel just wasn't left by himself. So, yeah. uh, so, so I went in and I'm, I'm out there and I'm just you know I'm just it's it's quiet. You don't hear a thing moving. You know we've just heard all this movement, all this activity, and something that's seven foot tall went through the woods like it was walking on marshmallow shoes. And I, and I'm yeah you know and then of course now. You know, Angie and Kaylin can hear stuff on the riverbank down there move. I mean, you know, and so they're pulling us away from one primary site for what reason we don't know. But when we came back, the first thing that Angie said is, "You guys let it separate y'all tonight." She said it it, it distracted and separated y'all for a reason. And she's like, "If you look straight ahead, there is a shadow and it's and it's moving." And you could kind of see this movement of something like it was just, if, if you guys have been in the woods before and have seen a Sasquatch do that side-to-side motion while it's looking at you, you know, mm-hmm. what's, you know what, and that's what it was doing in the woods. And I know y'all, I, I was holding the phone up while I was making that motion. I'm sure y'all saw me do it. Uh, and it's, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, they can't see me and I'm doing the motion. <laughs> so you could, you could clearly see. And then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, finally Daniel sees it, then Rex sees it, then everybody sees it, and you think, "We're not crazy. We're, I mean, we're 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 physically seeing this." And it was one of the best hunts that we had had in probably I don't know a month. And then after that, the activity has just has just took off, and it never ceases to amaze me. Now I'm going to let Taylor tell you about one of the daytime hunts that we just had recently because it was just Taylor and myself. Oh, the uh, the stairs that we found? that is that the well, one you're talking about? Well, that and, you know, we, we had seen we had seen through the woods the one the one thing. Oh, you know, yeah, could, okay, yeah. We I had could debunk, rock call. Yeah, I could debunk one. I could not debunk the other. 
so I'll let you take over. Okay, so we were, me and David, the, the, the actual live video is on our Facebook page right now. It was the mm-hmm. day, I mean, I, so it was probably, what, a month ago maybe? Is that what you said? Probably a month yeah, ago? Yeah, maybe, maybe a little month ago. And uh, we were sitting there, and all of a sudden David looks up, and I can, he was zooming in on his camera. You could see something at the base of a tree. It maybe looked like it was crouched. I would say it was either crouched down or it was behind like a little hill through the woods behind. I guess you could say, is that the one you're talking about? The little that is the one I'm talking about. Yeah, and then the time we fought, like we started going toward it, and the time we fought through the chain briars and <laughs> the trees that the thing had moved. When we got there, there was nothing in the spot of the brown, the actual brown figure at the base of the tree that we saw. Like the correct, uh, there was nothing that could have passed as what we saw at the base of that tree. It's either it climbed up the tree or it went farther back. Or it just, I mean, it was just insane. And what was crazy, you you couldn't, if it was a deer, you would have heard a deer run off through the woods. We didn't hear a single thing, like, when it just, it was just like we walked into something that just vanished in the thin air. I mean, it was insane. And then once we got up there, you could see just, what, five different trails leading each way. One leading to the cabin, one leading to the main trail, one leading back up toward, I guess, Rex's, uh, well, the, uh, our base camp up at right. the top of the road, and then I see, I mean, it was insane, and then we took the one that was to the left to the golf cart path or whatever, and that's when we found the, uh, it looked like you could, it, what was the figure you'd say, well, the creature that had walked that one trail, because you could see the light where it was wore out on the ground, the different spots. That's whenever we saw the stairs or whatever up. Yeah. we think. I'd say it would look like stairs to me because it was so, like, just worn out spots with, like, I guess six foot in between spaces or something that just walked all up the, I mean, it was, you could tell the trail was, like, just worn down of just, yeah. I mean, I, it's hard to explain. I've never seen anything like it. On the live video, you can definitely see how David's basically doing a full split to fit each, <laughs> each step yeah. all around the, the figure that we saw. I mean, it's just insane. I'm trying to fit it all in. It's just so much <laughs> that we saw that day during that live day hunt. That's insane. Well, Toby yeah. and I had found Toby and I had found that area probably nine months prior, and and the the trail and the steps were there then, but they were not as pronounced. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what we you know obviously. It is an ongoing path, and they do watch us when we're in the cabin. Uh, yeah. One of the things, one of the things that we have discovered now, I, I'm going to ask this to our, our 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 gracious hosts. I mean, obviously, Sasquatch can imitate different animals. Do you think, or have you ever heard Sasquatch imitate a human? Yes. Um, and I don't... how so? So we, my mom actually has the audio. Um, I don't know if she has it. She of a what we believe to be a sass um, saying our dog's name. Oh. My mom used to go outside. Wow. And she would call Cookie, 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 come on, Cookie, and she would get Cookie back inside. And uh, I want to say that you hear. Cookie go outside, and Mom called her, and then she comes back in, and that's when you hear it say "Cookie," like it. No, it, it says, grunts it, but it, it it says like this. It it says "Cookie, Cookie," like that. Yeah. You just put. And what was really? Body. Yeah, <laughs> what was really strange was the fact that she was out there barking, and then she just kind of did a like a whimper. Like when she she was a chihuahua, so she thought she was bigger and better than anything. Mm-hmm. But that particular <laughs> night, it, you can hear all of this on the recording. She cows down to it, and I think that she stops barking at it, and and then it then then as I come out and call her, she comes, and then you hear it say cookie cookie like that. Just Holy. like that. Holy cow. That's what Goldie is on me, David. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you the honest truth. 
<laughs> I really do. No, I don't I, I've got it. it somewhere. <laughs> the night, the night that we found the trail that Taylor and I were describing in great detail with it, it, it I mean, because it, it's going down a hill, and you know how when you go down a hill, you, you take a step and you leave an indention, and if you turn around and look back up, you've made it like an indention of, of steps. Well, this thing is very pronounced now, and on that night when Toby and I were in the woods and we were going to follow that trail and see where it came out to, Taylor and my daughter Taylor went out to a main trail, had to walk back down to the cabin to wait on us. They got out on the trailhead, and Toby's looking at me, and somebody goes, Dave. And I said, what? Toby said, I didn't think Oh, that. Lord. <laughs> and so I asked Taylor, and we hollered at, you know, Taylor and K- and Kaylin, like, what? And they're like, no, what? What do you guys want? They heard it say my name. I heard it. Toby heard it. But, you know, we didn't realize it was none of the group. And then T- T- Toby and I look at each other with just this look of amazement and go, it can, it can, it can imitate what we say. And it was... You know, we've heard it whistle before, just short of whistling the tune from the Andy Griffith show. I mean, it whistled great, and and we were in amazement of that. But now, Taylor will tell you, I, I don't allow guns on the hunt for a very personal reason. I love guns. I think guns are great. The more guns I can own, the happier I'll be. But when I'm in the woods with people who are scared to death, the first person that's going to wind up getting shot from an idiot will be me. So, therefore, I don't allow guns on a hunt. I've told y'all before, I have seen grown men reduced to mere sissies run, <laughs> lock themselves in the car, and beg me to get them out of there. I don't want, I don't want, I'm, I, I'm sorry, Tyler, I didn't mean to out you again. Um, I just, <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Taylor, you know, Taylor is Taylor's nickname is Taylor Run Run for a very specific reason. <laughs> I love I love you to death, Taylor. Uh, That's one of the questions I was about to ask. Actually, does Taylor still run run? So he is nowhere Not near like he used to be. He is he is really he is really manned up over the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taylor, I'm so sorry. I did not bring you on here to get you roasted. I thought. Oh, you're good. You're good. It's the rooster run run tonight. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we 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 love we we pick on each other all the time. Taylor scared me so bad this past Friday night in the woods <laughs> to prove a point. I walked right past him. And and didn't even see him standing on a trail that was wide open. Oh. And when he and when he made his little two sticks click, oh. holy cow! My <laughs> right arm is still hurting. I drew up. I I thought I thought I was going to get the my first time to ever see a Sasquatch that close because I thought it got me. <laughs> and uh, I just I drew up so hard and so fast that my arms are still hurting. So oh yeah. Gosh. But now. Having said that, Taylor, did I run? <laughs> no, but, uh, no. I thought Here's I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hey, in clean. in his defense, okay, we know we've heard stories about your. We'll go with bravery because you're a guest on my show, but um, common sense and and bravery, you know, lack of common sense and bravery. I feel like sometimes those two are, you know. Well, now, now here's, here's, the, here's the difference. I know where the cliffs are on the property, so oh. if I'm running towards them, I know where to stop. But but my, my thing is, and I, and I say this now, Taylor will tell you, this is where I get real serious about things. I have I have hunted this property by myself when, when, when schedules didn't allow anybody else to be there, uh, whether it be summertime or winter. And... When before I had my encounter where I physically saw a Sasquatch, it was a lot easier to go in the woods. After having saw a Sasquatch, it takes a lot more nerve to go into the woods. 
But having said that, I want to touch one. I want to reach out. If it'll let me just put my hand on its paw or its fur, and I want it, and I hope that it doesn't rip me in half doing it. It's, it's the only it's the only way I'm ever going to be satisfied. If you end up not going out, the other die. It's, it's kind of like it's kind of like it's kind of like going out on, on a rattlesnake hunt. Well, you go out to try to find them. If you find one, you you gotta you gotta wrangle them up. You don't just leave them. <laughs> So if I think I've got a Sasquatch, I've got to at least tempt to see if I can corral it. So therefore, I'm, I typically will try to do all I can to pursue. Uh, now, having said that, Sasquatch, rattlesnakes, don't get me wrong, I'm not chasing a snake. But if I see a snake, it's, I'm not going to go all sissy side. I do not like spiders. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, if they are my kryptonite. Oh, my God, I hate them. But now, Angie and I, Angie and I were on a hunt uh, back, I guess, maybe October of last year, October, November. Uh, yeah, it was last year, wasn't it? Or was it this year when we had the incident on the property? It was October. Yeah, okay, so it was around October of last year, and we are having a good time. We are having some good interaction. And we're we're up towards the rock pile area, and Angie Taylor Taylor can back me up. I don't I don't get nervous about a whole lot of anything. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm the guy that keeps my head to make sure nobody gets hurt because you know that's where the common sense comes in. But we were there, and we're just having a good old time. And Angie, you want to tell them what we heard? We heard like a man's deep voice. And it said what? <laughs> she she don't want to imitate it. <laughs> We're the cameras are rolling and this this took place maybe at the very least fifty to seventy five feet away from us, something goes Hey <laughs> Just like you're trying I mean very loud and I thought somebody walked in on us. <laughs> and I, I, you know, now the reason I don't, I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong, I have a healthy respect for Sasquatch, but I've never seen a Sasquatch carry a gun. So, ergo, I'm typically not afraid. Full grown man in those woods, uninvited on the property, typically is going to have a firearm. And so I'm trying to shut the cameras down, get the lights out, you know. Go dark so that, you know, because I know that whoever this is can already know where we are because we had lights on and because we were filming and just kind of having a good time. And we're, I'm, I'm talking so low the camera can't even pick up my whispering anymore. And, you know, my concern is giving Angie cause for concern because she's never seen me get antsy in any way, shape, or form. So then we're sitting here trying to wrap our heads around what's going on. And once we figure out, where it came from, it is impossible. It's I you couldn't you couldn't pay me to walk through the Cheney Briar and the Holly Bush to get in there. And we start, you know, kind of wrapping our head around the, the situation and yet again we have a Sasquatch imitating our speech pattern going, Hey and it is so clear. I mean and the audio was perfect. Rex was tickled with it so we, we 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 call tonight. Uh, we're we're gone. We come back the very next week. I mean the same night, the same everything. And now I know trees fall over in the woods all the time. And this tree was was a it was a dead tree. But if you know you ever seen a dead tree and you go up, so I'll just push it over and you go, holy cow, this thing's still solid. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what kind of tree we were dealing with. But this thing had been pushed over and snapped off at the at the base about five foot up of the base was still sticking in the ground. And it was just splintered and it was and it was pushed over in the exact spot we were standing when this thing yelled at us the week before. And you can chalk it up to coincidence, but how and why would this one tree fall on the trail in the exact spot where we were standing and and it points in the direction where this thing was yelling from 
as in to me as an effort saying, you guys are too close, don't come on this side of the property. And it's typically that time of year when we believe that they're either giving birth or close to it, and you're like, hey, you guys stay away, this is, this is a little too close for us. I don't know that that was the case, but, you know, the year before, a few months later, we found a juvenile Sasquatch footprint. Yeah. And then, you know, during this whole time, we hear this crazy, wild bird noise. I have never heard a bird like this. <laughs> the one that yeah, followed us everywhere. Yeah, the, it, 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 it sounded like a, almost like I'm kind of crying baby, if you will. And it was weird. And, I mean, I've been in the woods quite a bit, you know, both young and my adult life. I've never heard anything like that. And we're still stumped as to what it was, but it coincided with the whole incident with the tree falling because after the tree went down and we heard the holler, the bird thing just kind of went away and that was the end of it. Yeah, and it was, you know, so it was it was pretty cool. Um, this this particular part of the property, it just seems to just be a hotbed of activity. And, you know, I just, I, I wish we had better equipment to bring people better audio and better, better visuals of what we get. Um, you know, I, I tell everybody, our equipment, you know, one of our Sony uh, Handycams, New runs anywhere from seven hundred to nine hundred bucks, which is still fairly expensive, but in the grand scheme of things, is not is not the quality you need when you're hunting in the middle of the woods. If you're doing spook <laughs> investigations at a house, that's one thing. When you're trying to find Sasquatch, you need something a little bit bigger and brighter. So, still looking for sponsors. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying. To do, I'm trying to do a commercial. Yeah. Well, go for it. Plug away. Oh no. I'm, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> they can reach us at nc nc squatch watchers uh, uh, dot gmail, and uh, mm-hmm. and go from there. We're we're. I mean, we seriously. Anybody that wants to advertise on our little show. Anything we can do to help us out, I mean, we literally do just put it right back into the the hunts and trying to keep the show on the air because, you know, I've I, I said it before, without our producer, Rex Lale, we'd be dead in the water because uh, he pays for the majority of, of keeping the show on the air out of his own pocket. And I can tell you it is not cheap. Um, mm-hmm. He's just fortunate enough to be able to do it and, and use it to help promote his uh, construction business. So... Uh, it works out for everyone, but it's it gets a little tight at times to be able to justify putting that money into the show. Uh, right. But we do have a lot of people that like to watch it, and uh, we still are number one on WHKY TV 14 out of Hickory, and uh, we hope to continue to be be that way. So, oh yeah, yeah. So now I've um. got. I've got another good story for you, uh, full of full of information, but I don't know when you want me to start on it. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, well, we're skipping intermission. We want to hear you guys that much. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well, um, on, on one of our live hunts here about six, eight weeks ago, we, we did a live Facebook hunt, and some folks tuned in, and I, I don't want to mention their names just yet, uh, but some folks tuned in, and they were they were awestruck, and they were just, man, this is great. And we gave them a shout-out when their name popped up. And they sent us a question back that said, how do you get the Bigfoot to stop terrorizing your property? And I thought, what? <laughs> so... Uh, I had Taylor. I said, I said, try to reach out to that group or those people and get me a name and a number, and I want to call and talk to them. And then they did. They responded in kind. And I spoke to the man who owns this property in um, uh, Central North Carolina, uh, going you know down you know. Uh, well, I can say this: it's in the Uori National Forest. Uh, nobody will get mad at me for saying that. Uh, and the story that he told me was incredible, and one of which they had 
they had a case. Their, their, their driveway is a little bit long. It's probably maybe a not an eighth of a mile, but maybe a little more than an eighth of a mile long dirt road uh, off of a main highway. And lots and lots of woods around this place. I mean, picturesque Bigfoot area, okay? And one of his, I think at the time it was his son-in-law, saw something out in the driveway and thought somebody was goofing around. So he tears out down the driveway to chase somebody off the property. And as he's chasing it, he realizes this thing is not wearing clothes. It's got a fur suit. And it's only about five foot tall. And so he comes back and he's telling his father-in-law about the incident. He said, you know, he said, I, I think it was some kind of baby Sasquatch. And everybody just laughed and ha ha and oh, it was a big bunch of nothing until they're they're outside of the evening there in the man don't lay by the smoke in the house. They were on their porch smoking and they start hearing all these grunts and growls and yells on their property. And coming from this small section of woods, you know, looking at the back of their house and they all get to thinking, you know, maybe there is something to this story. You know, there was things being thrown at the house. Um, there, you know, they they had a window get broken. I can't say that that was Sasquatch related, but I can't say that it wasn't. Um, but last yes, last fall, same son-in-law is out on the corner of the property. Uh, he's smoking a cigarette, just kind of you know monkeying around, and looks up in between these two sets of trees. And this is two weeks prior, you know, this is, you know, he had just chased what he thought was a juvenile Sasquatch off of the property. And then, well, I guess Daddy Sasquatch come back to tell him that that wasn't very cool. Because he said that there was this seven or eight foot, if not taller, creature, full, full blown hair suit with a, a flat monkey crossbreed human looking face that chased him all the way to the porch and into his house. And so, you know, I'm listening to all these stories on the phone and and the the night we had our live hunt, I didn't realize that the activity was so bad and scared them so much that they actually had the law there that night. And the reason they had the law there is because this thing was beating on the house. So I've, it's got it's got our attention. So of course, you know Taylor had he was in Virginia that weekend. He couldn't come, and Toby was working out of town somewhere in Georgia, I think. And so it was just me and Angie. And so we pack up and we haul out, haul our butts on down to Eora, about 110 miles from home. Uh, and we get down there, and. That's when I realized the night that we had the live hunt was the night that it was beaten on his house. And we we actually, once we start investigating the property, he's like, well, I'm going to show you the, the, the handprint. He said, there's two of them. And so the, there's clearly handprints on the house, clearly. But I start showing the guy, I said, do you realize you got more than handprints? You ever took your fist and flat? You took the bottom of your fist and bumped something. Mm -hmm. There were fist prints on the house. Mm -hmm. There were handprints under window sills where this thing had leaned up against the house and was watching them through the window. There were. How high was the windows off the ground? I'm six foot three, and. And I couldn't see, I, you know, my forehead might come to the edge of the window sill. Holy the cow. handprint, the handprint was flush underneath the window sill, like it was leaning up and just looking in. So, you know, that would be about chest level. So this thing was eight, at least eight feet tall. Uh, the officer that came to to uh, do the investigation at the sheriff's department. This gentleman just happened to be six foot six, and when he compared his hand to the print that was on the house, it made his look like a kindergartner. <laughs> he said, "He said whoever hit your house had to be one huge individual." He said, "Is it a Sasquatch?" He said, "I don't know." 
He said, but something very large has been up on this house. So then we start walking around his property, and you can see up in the trees of this man's property where something has reached up nine and a half, ten feet up in these trees and have twisted limbs off just in knots and just busted them off in almost every tree on his property, you know, and, and all facing the house like it wants you to know that it's there. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pointing this stuff out, and he's like, you know, God, I didn't even see this stuff, you know. And we start walking the path where it thinks the creature watches their house from. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Angie and I are walking this path, I mean, and then you start seeing all these tree markers and these breaks that, you know, if you're a hunter and you're walking through the woods, it's nothing for you to reach over and snap a little twig or something so you can kind of mark your trail so you don't get lost on your way back out. Most people are going to reach down, they're going to break something waist high or chest high where you can see it. I don't know of anybody that goes in the woods, climbs up to a 9-foot, 10-foot section of a tree and starts snapping twigs off in that section of the tree to mark their way. And I start pointing these things out to this guy, and he's like, oh, man, you guys have got to quit. He said, this doesn't, it can't be real. He said, I don't want this to be real. I said, you don't, you don't, it don't have to be for you. It is what it is. You can either accept the fact that you have Sasquatch activity or you can go on believing somebody's <laughs> punking you. I said, but I can tell you, you're not being punked. I believe that you have Sasquatch. So as we go on into this trail, we've crossed over into someone else's property and, you know, of course, he said, you know, we're okay to be here. And right right smack dab in the trail where we see all these markings, we find a footprint. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm showing this guy, I'm like, look, I, I'm in a size 12, and this thing is roughly a little bit larger than my foot. I said, but look how wide it is. And we start counting toes. And I said, you know, who or what would be over here ever barefooted? I said, so you know the area I don't. He's like, no one's over here. He said, look at the area. He said, who would go barefooted over here? You know, I mean, we don't have a lot of rattlesnakes up in my neck of the woods. It is a rare event to find one. His neck of the woods is a little bit different story. So you don't want to go barefooted in your worry. Uh, but yet here we are with what I believe to be as a Sasquatch footprint. You know, and when Angie and I got there at, at uh, I don't know, let's see, about 2, no, 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 about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon that day. And uh, we didn't leave that night till about 12, 31 o'clock. Uh, and we just, we had an incredible experience on their property. We were planning on going back here in maybe, uh, maybe the end of May. Uh, and do an all-night investigation. Hopefully, Taylor and Toby and maybe Derek can even go on that one. And uh, if we do, we'll, we'll promise to do a live Facebook feed on that. And, uh, we, you know, we had we had so much problems with our equipment there. Uh, you know, I had SD cards that all of a sudden wouldn't read. Uh, I had cameras that malfunctioned. You know, it just it just seemed like there was too much going on it just seemed like there was too much going on with our equipment for it to be a coincidence. But I mean, I can't chalk it up to some type of Sasquatch supernatural activity, but we clearly knew when we were on that property we, we were not alone. Right. And it was really, it was incredible that they reached out to us during one of our live Facebook feeds and says, hey, can you help us? And, you know... Yeah. If nothing else, we were able to go down there and say, yeah, you're not crazy. You are having Sasquatch activity because here is the evidence to support it. So we get more and more. I had a guy today that called me uh, again, and he is begging me to come into Uwari also, where he had a Sasquatch encounter uh, this past January. And it's got him so tore up he won't go back in the woods. He doesn't want to go back into the woods until we can come with him. So, so that's uh, you know I, I love it that people reach out to us in that capacity, you know. But it, at the same at the same time, we run ourselves to death trying to keep up with all this stuff. So, 
Um, I mean, well, Taylor already runs his self to death. I'm just trying to keep up with him. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't help it. <laughs> now, <laughs> that was a good one. That was. That was now, a good uh, dig. <laughs> now, what, David? What, uh, two? Wait, when did we do our project? Sat- was it sat- Saturday? So it's two days we, ago? Yeah, we started about two weeks ago working on a project that we are so excited about. Yeah. And we can only say so much because the person who was who is who is uh uh gonna see this through to fruition is a um I I'm I, I can I think I can say this without getting us in trouble. He is uh he is working in the Hollywood film industry and he's worked with some pretty pretty top notch names as of you know, this past year, uh, he has been a part of uh, at least one major motion picture that is uh, probably be released uh, sometime next year with a with a you know a I can't I can't tell you the, the name of the actor because we're not supposed to know. Um, so you know, it, it's really cool stuff that's happening now. We've worked with this gentleman before on some smaller projects, and we just we're thrilled every time that we have any exposure to him because he's such an awesome individual and he's so talented when it comes to the art of filmmaking. Uh, having said that, you know, he's also, he shares our passion about Sasquatch and um, we wanted to get together and do something on those lines, but we don't want to fake a Sasquatch. Does that make sense? No, yeah. We don't. Yeah. We don't want our viewers to say, oh, well, you know, they're just faking it because they got this guy. So we've been talking to our our, uh, our producer friend now for some time about how we can do this without ruining, ruining our testimony as the NC Squatch Watchers. We work very hard to have the integrity that we have been able to establish within the, the Bigfoot community, and we want to keep that. So we're working on a semi-fictional film, if you will, loosely based on some of our own adventures, you know, based on factual evidence, and some of our eyewitness testimonies that are seem pretty incredible that we can't we can't debunk or confirm. We just listen and take it at face value and let the viewers decide sometimes because some of it's pretty incredible. Right. So we're taking a culmination of those events and we're putting it into a small independent film. And uh, after it has been completed, it will be released to first the uh, uh, independent film circuit, indie, the indie film, Sundance, a couple of others he's mentioned. And awesome. we'll see how it does there. Once it has run that circuit, then we can release it for public viewing, uh, i.e., you know, Night Call Radio or YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, our, our own video page. Uh, and it's and it's incredible. We've worked so hard so far. Uh, you know, we, we filmed all day Saturday from 10 a.m. to, what, maybe 3 o'clock? Yeah. For maybe, for maybe seven minutes' worth of footage. Right. So <laughs> it, yeah. It, it's incredible the amount of work that you have to put into to one of these projects to get just a little bit of good usable footage out of. But we are so excited to to work on this little Bigfoot movie uh, and and see it through to fruition. You know, and we we just at the very least it's going to be super entertaining. Um, yes, but. But with you guys, you know, there's no doubt that it'll be entertaining. Well, That's a given. Um, I think you guys. I'm excited. I'm so excited about this project of y'all's. I cannot wait to see it. I can't wait to share the heck out of it. Um, we'll definitely have you guys on to promote after you get it going. Um, Yay! I can't see you guys putting out anything that's not worth people's time. So I well, think uh, it's. I can't wait. We're really yeah. passionate that we don't want it. Me and me, Taylor and I both. That whole handy cam shaky footage crap, no way. <laughs> this, no, this is shot on a red dragon cinema camera. It's pretty it's pretty 
<laughs> yeah, legit. That's what you're saying. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> yes. Legit is not the word for it. I am so excited. Uh, I was, you know, until I got to see the first edited footage of one of our takes, I was, I was like, we're, we're, we're okay. This is going to be so great. And, and it's, it's just every time, every time this man gets involved in one of our projects, he just, he's able to take us to a whole new level of doing nothing but showing what we can do as a group. Now, keep in mind, this is a fictional scripted movie based on true events and testimonies, you know, so we have to call it a fictional film. We're not, it's not word for word one of our own hunts that we're turning into a movie. We're actually filming a fictional movie based on our adventures, and uh, and it has a very serious tone. Uh, it's really cool, and at the end of the day, we kind of want to creep you out just a little bit. And uh, yeah. I, everybody I mean, loves that. Well, you, you yeah. know, who goes in the Bigfoot, you know, looking for Bigfoot, thinking of, you know, uh, snow cones and, and uh, cotton candy? I mean, no you way. go hunting Bigfoot, if you go hunting Bigfoot and you're a little scared. And, yeah. I mean, and rightfully so, because you're going to interact with a creature that could rip you in half, you know, without even <laughs> thinking twice about it. So you better have a healthy respect. So Definitely. we want. We want the we want our little movie to kind of give you that same eerie presence, also, and keep you guessing about what's going on. And you know, the age old question: Is it real or is it not? You know, that yeah. is for each person to decide on their own. Now, yeah. I personally yeah. believe, so I'm already sold. So, <laughs> yeah. so you, yeah, while we were shooting Saturday, one of our uh, one of our cast members that's a pure skeptic that uh, I think we. we've drug him on maybe one hunt and uh an actual a rock comes flying over his head and lands the side of him. Like that was on because we're shooting on their like our primary hunt property and a, a rock comes do you remember that, David? Yep. I mean we're I sitting getting. there and we're you know, we're just kinda of goofing and, and we're winding down the last shot of the day and um you know I I was reading something here, but uh but anyway, we were getting that last shot of the day in, and, uh, you know, we were kind of winding down. All of a sudden, you you know, you, and you hear the rock crash. And what is so neat is it was thrown from downhill up over our heads into the woods where we were looking, you know. And there again, it was meant to distract. Because we were we were all looking in the wrong spot. Once we realized we're oh we're looking in the wrong place, you know whatever whatever it was we wasn't supposed to see was already moved. It's already gone. But uh, it was you know we had, we got a friend. I'm gonna say his name on here so you guys uh, will, will will hopefully remember him. But Tate Fulbright is such an yeah. awesome individual. Uh, I, I love the fact he's a, he's a good guy. Uh, he's committed and. You know, he's uh, went on a couple of hunts with us, and man, he he brings a he brings us a, a, a side of it. You know, he's still skeptical, but yet he's been on three hunts now, and each time he's like, "Holy cow! I cannot believe that just happened." And you know, it just the 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 evidence starts tipping in the direction where it's getting harder and harder for him to deny that there's something there. So I love that <laughs> aspect of bringing people into it. Just to just to watch them grow into a healthy respect that they have to believe at some point that there is a creature out there, and his name is Sasquatch. Yes, um, Ricky, my my husband who's on here, has some questions. But before we jump into that, it's it's we we've been together for nine years, and um, I told him when we first got together that I had. Uh, my mom researched Sasquatch and that I've been researching was knee high to a grasshopper and uh, you know I always uh, I was real upfront with him well of course you know he's been in the woods his whole life so he's he's never seen anything like that so he's like you know I've been in the woods my whole life I haven't seen it so it doesn't exist and over the years I've worn him down a little bit and got him more open to it um, he still is see it to believe it but 
he shows me videos now and asks me what I think, and he shows me pictures, and he researches it. You know, he's been researching. He hasn't actually gone on an outing yet, but, or a hunt, you guys call him, um, but he's mm-hmm. researching it, you know, trying to learn as much as he can about it, and now he's a co-host on this show. So it can be done. It may take a while, but it can be done. You know, just, um, I think information most people don't have information. They just scoff. They're like, "Huff, right? No, it's a monkey in the woods on a barrel." I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's more likely. <laughs> that makes more sense." I've had so many people tell me that, and it, I just kind of get upset. Um, but I think information, and and I think your new project is going to get information out. I think your show helps to get information out. Our show helps to get information out. Finding Bigfoot. It helps to it's it's really helped to change the game that show has. So, um, Ricky, what were your questions? While I had you, um, if like like she said, I'm new to it. I do watch a lot of these videos that some people put up, and not, I see I read all these comments where these guys are like, "Oh, it's too blurry. Why is every photo a blob squatch?" And I, the other day, it finally got to me, and I was like, "Look." Let's just say there's this 700 pound quotation marks creature that's coming at you or breaking a tree limb or peeking around a tree at you that's not supposed to be there. It technically doesn't exist. No, that's what everybody says. But do you think your adrenaline's not going to take over to where you're going to be pissing in your pants, shaking the camera so bad that you're going to get a quality picture? <laughs> like, yeah. And people don't take, like, in consideration, this thing is moving, what? It's one step is to hour what three, so this thing's moving yeah. quicker than people think. So you're not getting it. It's not ever standing still. This thing's moving at a pace to where if you would take a picture of it, it's going to be blurry. Like and the people nervous also is going to be shaking. Yeah, I mean, I'd be if I saw it, I would be running away from it trying to snap a picture behind me. So I mean, I know <laughs> mine would be blurry. It'd be a <laughs> picture. Oh, they may have a better. <laughs> The the what only kind of advice allowed? would you go ahead? What kind what kind of advice would you give to someone that is new that wants to get into the field that wants to do this? What are key things that you could look for? Um, I've got a buddy that I used to work with. He's got quite a bit of land in southeast Oklahoma, and he wanted to know: Is there things that he could bait for on his land to get more activity so it's easier to spot them? Because he lives actually right on the edge of the Kaimeshi Mountains, and that's already a hot spot. Okay. Well, I will tell you, be careful when you try to bait, uh, simply because when you're baiting for Sasquatch, you're also baiting for any type of wild animal out there, uh, including bear. Okay, Anything a Sasquatch will eat, so will a bear. So first of all, be mm-hmm. careful baiting. And it has been my experience in talking to several people that they said they wish they would have never started baiting a Sasquatch because it's it's like giving a kid a candy bar at the wrong age. They never stop wanting it, and they're going to hound you and pitch a tantrum until you, until you continue to do so. I have a group that I'm going to interview that actually sold their property and moved out of state because they said that they wish they had never baited but Sasquatch because they they hounded them 24-7 for their favorite things. And I won't even tell you on on, on air what that is because they said it was such a nuisance. They almost went broke trying to keep up with demand, and it was one of those things, if you didn't, you didn't get a moment's rest until you supplied them. So uh, what to look for is tree breaks are going to be some of the most common things that you're going to find, and it's going to be... It's going to be something that's out of the ordinary. If you're a hunter, you know what a deer rub looks like. You know what a trail break looks like, okay? When you start seeing stuff that does not, doesn't make sense for it to be done in the woods, you will say, why is that there? And then start looking around to see if there's more evidence of something that doesn't look that looks out of place. If you've got a tree break, chances are somewhere along the way you're going to have saplings that are snapped and twisted have, have you ever been through the woods and tried to break a tree, a, a live tree branch off? Have you ever tried to twist uh, an oak branch off? No. You can twist on the oak branch until your hands start to bleed, and chances are you're going to leave the limb dangling in the tree. So when you're walking through the woods and you see a limb that is completely twisted off of a live tree and it's green, 
what did it and how strong must it have been to be able to accomplish that because I've tried to break limbs off as big as my pinky finger on live trees just to have something to clear spider webs with and it's not <laughs> worth the effort by the time I get it broke loose. And I'm going, holy cow, it, what strength this thing must have to twist saplings off. And mm-hmm. why would you find a sapling twisted off at the ground stuck in another tree? Right. Those are those are things that you, I mean, you know, anything that's out of the ordinary means something out of the ordinary is going on. And, and those are the things you got to look outside the box for. Okay. And and I tell everybody that goes on the hunt with me, chances are the only way you're going to see a Sasquatch is with your ears and your nose. Mm-hmm. If you if you pay attention to your surroundings, you're going to hear it and you're going to smell it well before you ever see one. I hunted over two years in a dedicated area before I ever saw my first visual, unequivocal, that's a Sasquatch, and it's 25 foot from me. I didn't make a mistake on this, okay? So listen with your ears and smell and see. I I tell everybody, see with your nose, because you're going to know when you're close to one. If you didn't smell a Sasquatch, chances are you didn't see a Sasquatch. Yeah. So um, can I ask, this is random, but what do they smell like there? Here they smell kind of like, they'll smell like urine, like, like, real, uh, like a zoo. Real musty, foul, a, a, I tell about it's, it's like a really rotten urine feces smell. I mean, it's, it, it is a, yeah, a, a sour, pungent thunk. Um, a hint of skunk. <laughs> yeah, there's a hint of skunk in it. It, it, it is. It's it's one of those smells where everybody knows what a wet dog smells like. Okay, while unpleasant, it's not unbearable. But we've had we've had. You ever had a wet dog that went and wallowed in like a dead possum carcass that had been there for three weeks? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then while he was wallowing, a cow came by and peed all over him. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then after he was on his way home, a horse stuffed two a horse apples in his mouth and come on, he breathed on you. That's a Sasquatch. It is. It a, sounds like our Sas are more hygienic than yours because oh, they, they're not that they bad here. It's well, it, 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 de- it depends. Um, Typically, after hard rains, you don't smell as much Sasquatch as you're going to hear more of it. Uh, as as it gets deeper into July, the worse the worse the smell is going to be. Uh, and I guess it's like anything else, you know, you know, hygiene. In the winter time, you don't smell Sasquatch that much because I guess it's too cold for the for the aroma to aromiate through the forest. Okay. Uh, but the hotter it gets, the worse they smell. The uh, the guy that I worked with, he was also telling me on his property, he was setting out coon traps. He had a bunch of coons that was messing with him, just live mm-hmm. traps, not like legs or nothing. And he came up on one of his traps, and I want to say that all the bait was gone, but the trap was smashed, like unusable smashed. Okay. Do you think that could be something like that? There's there's only, well, first off, when it's smashed like that, always look for hair, okay? Um, if it's, if it's you know, typically there's going to be some kind of hair evidence. And my opinion is you're only going to find two kinds of hair on a trap that is completely rendered useless because uh, a coyote or a wolf or something like that they might gnaw a spot, but they're not going to destroy it. A bear and or a Sasquatch will destroy a trap to get to the goodies inside. Okay. We do have small amounts of uh, black bear in, on eastern Oklahoma. So that could be. It's a possibility. Uh, we actually have bear on our property. We've, we've had fresh, fresh bear track, and we have seen where... 
they have just mauled through some old rotten trees to get the grubs out of them. So we know that, it, that they are there. Uh, we've been blowed at by bears, you know, get close enough, you know, you hear the, <sighs> you know, you think, oh, Lord, time to go the other direction because you know that you've just run up on a bear. And, and a bear in the dark is no fun. It's it's worse than a Sasquatch ever dared to be. Sasquatch will play with you, bear will eat you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I had to cut my lights on because I got a gray fox in front of me. That was pretty cool. So, uh, that was a, you know, a little bit of wildlife out here is pretty cool. So that is. That just made the end of the show even better, right there. It's kind oh, of hey, funny. Gosh, I didn't think it was that late. I know. It is. It's. We got about four minutes. Three and a half. It was kind of. <laughs> it was kind of funny early on in the show. You were talking about pushing dead trees over and stuff. Uh, the last time I went out camping, there was just a bunch of these. Maybe six to eight inch around dead pines about seven or eight years ago this tulsa area they got hit pretty bad with pine beetles and then there was a whole boatload of fires i just got bored and i went to hang my backpack up get it off my shoulders for a bit and uh when i did that tree fell over so me and the two guys that we went camping with we just as we're walking down the trail and there was one close we just pushed it out of the way of the trail and there was two or three that we bucked up to that it just wasn't coming over and they've been they've been dead for almost a decade now. Yeah, yeah. That that's what we we have a couple of trees. Uh, about ten years ago, a tornado came through this property and, and downed a bunch of trees, and some of them, you know, were stripped during the process and just never recovered. And that's kind of the trees that we're seeing that for at least about a decade, maybe a little, maybe not that long, are are being, you know, it'd be one thing if they just kind of fell over at the base. You know, I could say they just rotted right off, but when mm-hmm. they're, but when they fall over five feet up and they're splintered, and nothing else around them has been touched, I just can't, I can't fathom that. You know, and we, you know, we go and we start kicking on the stumps, and you know, we're, you know, we're trying to see you know how hard this thing is, and it didn't show any sign of just deterioration from rot. It just seemed like it was physically pushed over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a couple minutes left. Is there anything that you guys want to add before we go? But do you know what a do you know what a Bigfoot's favorite vegetable is? What is that? Sasquatch. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh. Oh. <laughs> you know. Do you know. Do you know who are an eight foot? 500 pound Sasquatch eats his lunch yet? Anywhere he wants to. Anywhere he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, did y'all get these off the back of a Laffy Taffy? I'm no judgment. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> They're perfect. They're perfect. You can come on our show and tell cheesy Sasquatch jokes anytime you feel like it. <laughs> We encourage it on the show. We want people to get on our Facebook page and tell us Bigfoot jokes just to get a kick out of it. So. Definitely. <laughs> oh, that's great. Definitely. I get a kick out of them. Um, well, we really appreciate you guys coming on tonight, and we wish you luck on your project and your research. Like I said, please keep up the live videos. They're awesome. I know I am. Yes, they are. Judging by how many people like them. Um, yeah, but I wish you guys the best of luck, and uh, can't wait to have you back on to talk about the end of your project when it's completed. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. We'll awesome. Do. Awesome. Thank, Thank you guys for having us. Yes. You All bet. Right. Well, you bet. Thank you for coming on. It was our honor to have you back. Oh, Thank no, you so honor much. All ours. <laughs> well, we're going to get you back next season. We'll be, we'll, we always take the summer hiatus at the end of May. So next oh, yeah. season, I'm going to get with you ahead of time, and that that way we can be sure to get the picture up, which I don't know if I can wait till then to see it. But, I can, um, uh, if David, we can PM you a picture of it. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. But uh, yeah, we'll, we need to get together. Do you have any recordings? 
Surely y'all got some well, recording. Right? We, we do, but here's here's the problem when we do that. We have a central database, and do you know how much one MacBook uh, holds as far as uh, megabytes of, of information? Uh, <laughs> yeah. We we have thirteen full. Oh my gosh! Uh, oh my gosh! And our, our producer Rex is constantly buying storage data banks. For all of our our hunts, and so when we go to just do editing, it, it is almost impossible at this point for us. I mean, we have so much we can't even find our own stuff. Sometimes we have so much. you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah. 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 I think he's gone. <laughs> I think we lost. <laughs> Um, well, all right. well, yeah, I think we still have yeah. Taylor here. <laughs> they did. I know. I'm just saying goodnight. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, right. definitely uh, send us what info you can and, and uh, everything, and then um, let us know when you guys are far enough along in the project or finished with the project and want to come back on. Awesome. You have an open awesome. invitation yeah, to we'll Nightcrawlers. Sweet. So as soon as I get the teaser, and uh, I'll talk to David as soon as I get off here, I'll call him about the picture, and I'll PM, I'll PM you all the picture and let you look at it. Oh, thank awesome. you so much. Awesome. And if y'all get anything <laughs> right. else more that you think I'd enjoy looking at because I'm so new to it, man, send me. Oh, yeah. yeah send me sure. whatever I'll you can. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll actually, if Rex don't give us the, uh, the uh, thing to – let y'all use, like, if we can't find some, I'll just start recording them on my phone on live videos, like, of all of our recordings and stuff, and let them, let uh-huh. people hear them like that. Yeah. A little bit like good. that, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you Appreciate for coming, you coming on, on, man. Taylor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, have a fun time. Have fun. Definitely. All right. All right. Well, take care, and I hope you feel better. You too. <laughs> oh, right. yes. Thank you so much. I'm ready to get over this mess. Oh, hey, yeah. all of y'all will... <laughs> we'll see all of y'all <laughs> next Monday night on Night Callers Bigfoot Radio. Good night, y'all. All right. See ya. <laughs>